cannabis and driving doesn't seem to be a major problem. It's certainly not as major a problem as alcohol driving. And we know in states in America where people are switching from alcohol to cannabis, deaths on the road from alcohol are falling faster than deaths are rising from cannabis. In fact, they're not rising from cannabis. Marijuana decreases your reaction time, making you an unsafe driver. If you're high, don't drive. Don't drive high. With three times more mobile drug testing, there's no escaping it. The overwhelming majority of people are not impaired at all at the time of their driving. That's the law. A case was thrown out by a local magistrate who labelled the drug driving laws as mysterious and uncertain by design. You will be penalised if you drive stone. The law comes down on you like a ton of bricks. Can't risk losing my licence, I need it for work. Police say they need more money for marijuana enforcement. If you want to be absolutely guaranteed, don't consume drugs and then drive at any time. Don't drive high. There is a new reefer madness in the world, and it's on the road. Millions of people around the globe are facing serious consequences, losing their driver's license, facing high penalties, and even imprisonment when using cannabis in their lives and driving. Cannabis News Network attended the third international symposium on drug-impaired driving in Lisbon. We wanted to find out the latest in science and development regarding cannabis and driving. It's an impairing substance. I know there's a lot of arguments about exactly how much it impairs, but really if it's a, a road safety issue, then it should be the same as with alcohol. We need to make sure that laws that are being enacted are uh, firmly based on science. So if we install per se limits, then we should be very sure that these limits actually distinguish impaired drivers from un unimpaired drivers, which is not necessarily the case right now. We see uh, pedestrians as well, bicyclists who have consumed, who also have actually entered into traffic and then get uh, struck. So it isn't just a car thing, it is passenger, or it's uh, pedestrians, bicyclists, and even in commercial vehicles. Okay, so if it is up to the hardliners, the preferred thing for them would be for stoners to just chill on a couch. Many countries do not penalize the use of cannabis, but now, since there are drug testing laws, cannabis consumers, recreational or medical, can or will be criminalized. Some people who, for example, use marijuana for medicinal purposes, they will, because they smoke on a daily basis, always test positive for cannabis in their blood. And these levels will always be above the per se limits that countries are using today. They run the risk of losing their license and that would not necessarily be justified. They didn't care. It still impairs whether or not you're, you're using it recreationally or for medicinal purposes. It's cannabis, it's the same substance. One of the indications for using medicinal cannabis is pain. So people who drive a car who have pain complaints, they may actually perform less when they're not treated as compared to when they are treated with you know, any, any kind of drug, including cannabis. And what about these tests? Are they reliable? And what do they tell? A lot of countries and a lot of police services around the world would like to see some device that could measure cannabis impairment at the roadside. And I think it's premature at this point to say that we have such a device. We can detect cannabis in oral fluid, but that's all we can do is detect its presence. THC can be detected in the blood for days and sometimes weeks after usage. However, the presence of cannabis cannot necessarily be said to indicate impairment nor conclusively be the main contributor to crash risks. We look at people who are arrested for impaired driving. We look at people who actually die in motor vehicle crashes. And cannabis is the number one substance after alcohol. Don't take your chance of, of yourself getting arrested, losing your job or your license or your, li your livelihood. Alcohol has proved to have the reckless effect of causing out-of-control driving, leading to many deaths and injuries. The culprits don't face this zero-tolerance attitude. 
Overall, some studies claim the rates of fatal car crashes have declined in states with medical cannabis laws. In theory, it would even be possible that somebody who smokes very, very frequently, daily, continuously, may actually be unimpaired at all. It is evident that science and opinions vary. Therefore, politicians and policymakers should be patient and wait for more definitive answers before enforcing harsh drug laws that can devastate the lives of many. Some countries are changing their laws according to the new science. Other countries are struggling. They're still thinking that the old policies are the ones that they have to fix with and then they're trying to make the evidence fit the policy rather than making the policy fit the evidence. Your source of Cannabis News. Cannabis News Network.